So we are reading uh, Liquid Luck by Joe Gallenberger. We are on uh, page 85 of the book, chapter, chapter 7, Luck, and uh, page 76 of the PDF. Shimangla, you're on. The Abundance Tree Exercise. This exercise is designed to help eliminate unconscious blocks to abundance, whether in the form of feelings or limiting thoughts. It is an energy conversion exercise. Find a quiet hour, bring a couple of pieces of paper and a pencil with you. Relax and ask for help from higher source and your own unconscious as you do this exercise. <clears throat> now list one item per line in a one, two, three fashion, any ways past or present that you have felt guilt for acts and thoughts, large or small. This can also be guilt for things that you did not do, but that you feel you should have done. We do this exercise because guilt creates an I don't deserve blessings pattern, which block list anything that comes to mind, even if it seems trivial. No judgment, just observe with compassion and put it down if it comes into your awareness. List things as minor as not going to church on Sunday or synagogue on Saturday or forgetting someone's birthday to times when you hurt or failed another or yourself in a major way. When you feel the energy slacken, begin writing with your non-dominant hand and see if more items flow through in this manner. So, <clears throat> what is this implying? Any time that you feel guilty about anything, which side of the grid you are, it's very clear you are on the left side of the grid. And anything that puts you on the left side of the grid is not worth hanging around, not worth carrying with you. So what is he saying in this process is that anything in your life that you feel guilty about, put it down on a list so that you can get it out of your system. Now, uh, last, the last line that he says over here is once you are done with writing with your dominant hand, because your dominant hand is accessing a certain area of your memory system, you start attempting to write with your non-dominant hand, which is accessing a different area of your memory system, so that you can have a more comprehensive list. Yes, Renuji? Uh, but yeah, this guilt is um, something what you felt earlier also. Sometimes there are things which you felt earlier which are there because the moment Correct. You so he's saying now that you born, but you still feel guilty about it. So anything all that, those things. Are anything that you feel guilty about, make a list of anything you feel guilty about. But so you feel guilty, guilty. You feel guilty about saying can't so many times in the past. Okay. Now you're not saying it, but you're still guilty about it because now it has come into your conscious awareness. So say, right. I feel guilty about saying can't so many times. No, but no. I want to know one thing, Bhaiya, that yeah. supposing you felt guilty and something troubled you years and years back. Are Baba, if you were a baby, it troubled you, you still write that. If you're still carrying it and it comes into your conscious awareness. Oh, if so what is the first thing he is saying? Go into a state, a meditative state, right? Go into a, what does he say? The exact words over here are, Okay, relax and ask for help from the highest source and your own unconscious as you do this exercise. So you're going into a deeper state of yourself. You're asking for help from above to be able to actually start to assess whatever you feel guilty about. There are so many things we'll have. Again, so many things. So write it now. If you feel guilty, write it. If you have so many things to feel guilty about, then write it down now. So become aware of what you're feeling guilty about. Very simple. So uh, can I just say something here? Yeah, uh, of course. Even the fact, uh, Rinoji, that you are saying there's so many things, 
even that itself is great because you're becoming aware already okay okay uh, and you will want to write them down when you start listing it because you know that you know yeah no because normally you don't think you're guilty about it but the moment you think about this guilt uh, then there are 101 things uh, so let's just write it and get it over with yeah as simple okay. as that. do the exercise na make the list i'll do that and this is not one you don't have to i mean you're getting a process here you're not getting that you'll have only one opportunity in fact we may not have the opportunity here but we are going to have it in the other program that we are going to do so whatever thank you Now continue this list with any way you have felt or feel unlucky. Again, putting on paper anything that comes to your mind without regard to the objectivity of the item, because if a part of you feels that the item is an example of your being unlucky, it can impair your sense of good luck. So, anything you feel. anything you feel guilty about okay anything that you feel unlucky about so what are you resonating at that time you are on the left side of the grid and you are resonating that <clears throat> so if you are resonating feeling unlucky if you are resonating feeling guilty then that is what is going to manifest in your life so you need to write down the list of the times that you felt unlucky also so the list make one list of whenever you felt guilty and another list of whenever you felt unlucky <clears throat> when this <clears throat> when this listing feels complete take the list and the pencil with you to a place where you can be comfortable for example in a recliner or on a bed then close your eyes for a few moments relax even further and imagine yourself in a beautiful field or meadow of soft grass with the sun warming your body as a nice breeze keeps you refreshed close by is a tree symbolizing your abundance this is your abundance tree strong in structure and ready to receive nutrients nearby is also a pile of dead branches see each item on your list as an individual branch in the pile each branch represents the pattern of frozen energy that is created by having that particular guilt or sense of unluckiness energy is in fact neutral and you can now release this energy by breaking apart the pattern holding it in a negative form of feeling guilty or unluckiness so <clears throat> have you got this you have made that list right now each of the items in that list is represented by that branch which represents that energy which is stuck which you can't use now the same thing happens in biofield tuning also when we are doing the timeline or when we are going through uh, getting the earth star and the sun star into the right spot wherever the blocks are coming those are like these dead branches so what do we do we have a conversation about it we ask you to change your perspective about it so that it releases the energy which is stuck and which is causing that block so in here the same thing is here that whatever we have made it as per our list that many dead branches of the tree are there and that is what the branches represent whatever whenever we have felt unlucky and whenever we have felt guilty now imagine a large wood chipper like tree cutting crews use for cleaner those noisy machines with sharp rotating blades and a big shoot out of which spew wood chips which can be used as a fertilizing mulch turn on the wood chipper hear its powerful whine and feed it in feed into it one branch at a time the pile of branches at your feet crossing each item of your list as you go 
Hear the tone of the machine change and then return to its strong whine after each branch goes through. It works even better to make the sound of the wood chipper, letting your voice change as the branches go through. Smell the woody freshness of the released energy. When you have finished with the whole pile, turn off the chipper. Rest a moment, then take the resulting pile of fresh nutrient-laden wood chips and spread them all around the base of your abundance tree. See the tree greening and growing fully healthy with strong roots that reach deep into the earth and a crown that reaches to the heaven. Enjoy your refreshed abundance tree for as long as you like. Then bring yourself back to an awake and alert state. Throw away or burn your list, letting go once and for all all the constriction and pain represented by the list. So, so the tree, that tree which is there represents your abundance, that everything that is good, everything that is uplifting in your life. Now, all this dead energy, this stuck energy, what we are doing? We are converting it like the energy conversion box, right? We are converting that energy and using that energy to nourish the abundance tree. So all the energy which is stuck, even in biofield tuning, the same thing happens. The energy which is stuck, the premise is that it gets attached to the tuning fork and we bring that energy back and put it back into the circuit, into the channel, so that the body system can start using that energy which was stuck. Over here, the same process is there. These dead branches represent that stuck energy. You're going to imagine in your mind a wood chipper. This is something which is used. You know, you'll hear, see it in movies, etc. We have one in the golf course also, where the dead branches, they put it through that and then the resultant wood chips they spread around in the golf course. You know, it, it, it's actually nitrogenous material, the wood chips. So it helps the other trees and plants to grow. So what are you doing? The dead energy which is stuck, which is representing your guilt and your unluckiness is being converted into fertilizer to nourish your abundance tree. So that energy comes back into circulation. And if you imagine the wood chipper sound in your uh, uh, in your ears when you are doing the exercise that means what and you are smelling the wood chips you may be tasting the wood chips in the air so the more sensory perception you can bring into the exercise the more uh, invigorating the more real it will start becoming for you okay this is a fantastic exercise and there is no number of times that you can do it but the fact is that the more you do it, the better your clearing of all the guilt, all the uh, unnecessary things which are there. And now you don't have to restrict it to only guilt and unluckiness, right? You can, uh, uh, you can do it for your sickness. You can do it for whatever you like. Anything that is putting you on the left side of the grid, you can do the same exercise to get rid of it. Yes, Niza? wanted to know we imagine ourselves as tree or you're just imagining no, no, no. another tree you have you have an abundance tree right okay near mm -hmm. the so tree all was... these dead branches are there mm -hmm. and then what we are doing is there is a machine there so we are picking up one branch at a time and putting it into the machine and it is getting chopped up okay. and when the branch it's like ganna ka jo automatic <laughs> machine chalta hai na so when they push the ganna, chalo ho jata. <coughs> and when the ganna comes out again, chalo ho jata. then again the ganna is put, chalo ho jata. then again it is, then again, so you can imagine it in your head, okay, and then do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We have now covered all the important energies that go in the making of the energy portion, liquid luck, and that I consider essential for creating a life pattern of consistent, consistent good fortune and abundance. We have seen how grounding, happiness, gratitude, and feeling abundant, compassionate, praising, loving, and fortunate all work together synergistically, resulting in a powerful flow of energy 
that can be used towards creating the best that life can offer. We have been able to cover these areas in detail in a way that could not be done in 37-minute liquid luck meditation. Along the way, hopefully, your understanding of these important energies and the process of manifestation has deepened. I have also attempted to provide practical and enjoyable exercises to practice at home to expand these energies in your own life. If you have just read about the exercises up to this point, I strongly suggest that you experience the exercises yourself. If there seems to be too many of them, just select one or two to start with that intuitively call to you. Then do the one that you feel the most resistance toward. Doing because that one will often be the most transformational. Okay, so of course, we've all discussed all these factors of gratitude, love, uh, abundance, compassion, praise, all of them work together, grounding, happiness, all of them actually work together to provide what we are looking at, creating abundance, creating happiness, creating gratitude in our life. Veena, would you please stop uh, uh, doing annotation on the screen? You've been annotating. Please stop annotating. Yes. Shivangla, finish this. Shivangla. I will finish this chapter by mentioning a song that helps me enter that zone where I feel lucky. KD lines, luck in my eye. Good luck. Okay, so that more or less finishes this. But we are going to chapter 8. Chalo. Chapter 8. Synchronicity, Serendipity, Timing and Trust I listened to Liquid Luck on a loop last night, woke this morning and it was still playing through my headphones. Went to a retail show as I have a design company. A fellow exhibitor parked right next to me and I spoke to him about losing 300 pounds worth of stock in a box two weeks earlier and that I thought was stolen. Lo and behold, the very same guy had picked it up because the box was plain. He had no idea it was mine and was going to see who sold this product at the show today and ask them, did you leave anything? That's a little bit surreal and it would appear synchronicity and maybe your liquid luck may be connected. Anyway, Thanks for the reply and I will be listening again tonight as it's a 110 million pound rollover on the UK lottery. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Steve. Right. The <clears throat> so, when you are in that state of mind, in that state of consciousness, then luck will automatically flow to you. I was speaking to Reverend Bill. He was one of the people who was there in the uh, in the talk of uh, when we did the palm leaf leading talk a few days back. Okay, now he had shared a story with me previously where he had actually bit into a, into a fruit which had a pit in it and it was supposed to be pitted, but the pit was there. So he bit into it and it actually cracked two of his teeth it, it broke one tooth and one tooth went inside his gum and it was extremely painful and his mouth had swollen up and all that. And then what happened was he went to the dentist and he, I'm sure he'll share this story when we call him on the show, but I'm still on, on the talk, on the 915 talk. But he went to the dentist and they told him that you need root canal and you need a tooth removal, Right. And they said that we had next appointment is three months later. So there was nothing he could, they could do and nothing he could do. So he came back 
and then he performed a self healing on himself and he tells me that i did the self healing and my pain went away right now that is that okay and then he let it out that i in into the universe that i would like this appointment to be pre pone and they had told him if there's any cancellation we'll give it to you now people around him started telling him that you need to go and bang on doors you need to pick up the phone and speak to people so that you can get an earlier appointment now this guy he says that no i trust that whatever needs to happen will happen right now day yesterday he told me in the evening that he got a phone call from the uh, doctor's office that there has been a cancellation and his appointment has been preponed so i guess today is his appointment now in the same call the person tells him that this is going to cost you 650 dollars so the bill uh, reverend bill says that yes i know i understand i am happy to give it okay and he puts the phone down then he goes and he looks into his paypal account and he finds that someone has just transferred 500 dollars to him are you understanding that and then he looks in his mail and he finds that two people have sent him gift cards this visa gift cards of 200 dollars each so what happened he got the appointment and he got the money to pay for the treatment also right what is that that is living in that abundance living in that state of consciousness where the universe provides for you whatever is it is meant to provide okay i just wanted to share the story with you all because i found it to be very very uh, you know in tune with whatever we are talking about in this book there are a few more areas that i will cover in the next chapters that i consider important first however i want to be sure that some words and concepts used after the portion is created are clear in their meaning and explore how they are related to the energies of grounding happiness gratitude abundance compassion praise love and good fortune that we have focused upon so far these are the concepts of synchronicity serendipity timing and trust they appear in the liquid luck meditation as follows so now apart from so apart from what you are putting into the liquid time place and person start to matter so when i was learning astrology the person who were, who i was learning astrology from constantly used to say time place and person what may be right at one time may not be right at another time what may be right for one person may not be right for another person what may be right in a certain place may not be right in another place okay so what he is saying here is synchronicity serendipity timing and trust so whenever we are doing anything whenever we are engaging in anything which is uplifting like this we need to have trust we need to be open to synchronicity and we need to op be open that something may just happen out of the blue and when to do it is extremely important so when you are going into these higher states you get an uncanny feeling that okay this is the right time to do this and when you start clicking into that feeling right you will find that you will land up doing things at the correct time which becomes extremely important again time place and person and i have seen it work over and over and over again in my life from the liquid luck meditation this portion when swallowed brings the drinker a day where everything fortuitously falls in place for great benefit on this day synchronicity serendipity grace and positive energy abound bringing you easily and joyfully to your highest good 
and desire. This portion brings the clarity to notice just the right thing at the right time. The impulse to move with just the right timing in the right direction and the courage to act on these intuitions with great trust. This is an excellent portion to use whenever you desire help to achieve your goal or even something better. So when you follow the portion, synchronicity, serendipity, grace, positive energy abound, bringing you easily and joyfully to the highest good and desire. Okay, so this becomes very, very important. Yes, Sapna ji, you have something to say? Sorry, I missed your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to say that is there any CD of uh, liquid love? She said, I heard the... Uh, yeah, so we've been doing the meditation quite often now because of all you people were asking for it. So the CD is available. You can buy it if you want. Okay. Thank you. When the energies we have been exploring have all been purified and heightened, then the magic begins where synchronicity and serendipity abound. So, very clearly said, when the energies we have been exploring have all been purified and heightened, the magic begins. This is exactly what we've been talking about. Raise your level of consciousness. Purify yourself. Jhadu maro yourself. We keep saying, na, jhadu maro, jhadu maro, jhadu maro. When the more pure you become, the clearer the sound becomes, okay, then that is when the magic starts to happen. Now, in fact, we have people who, when they are uh, in the biofield tuning, they are being able to rehear the tone that, yes, now the tone has cleared and I know that the clearing has taken place. Okay. Why? Because they are listening to it. They are listening to the sound of the fox. And let me tell you, the in the sound, when that pure sound comes, you know at that point the clearing is there. And that's when the magic starts to happen. So that's exactly what he's saying here. When the energies we have been exploring have all been purified and heightened, then the magic begins where synchronicity and serendipity abound. Synchronicity is a very interesting phenomenon. Meg Lundstrom has a great and simple definition of synchronicity. She calls it a wink from the cosmos. A more extensive definition might be that synchronicity is a sequence of events that appear meaningfully related when no clear causal relationship ex exists. It is the idea of a meaningful coincidence or a coinciding of event in a range of feelings. Shimangla, which network are you on? And results. Shimangla, which network are you on? Impact on a person. Shimangla, which network are you on? You're breaking up. Shimangla. Synchronistic events suggest an underlying pattern that is grander than the visible reality wherein the synchronicity appears. Carl Gustav Jung, who developed the theory of a universal mind or Shimangla. collective unconscious... One second. That's what I said. Synchronicity is a very interesting phenomenon. Meg Lundstrom has a great and simple definition of synchronicity. She calls it a wink from the cosmos. A more extensive definition might be that synchronicity is a sequence of events that appear meaningfully related when no clear causal relationship exists. It is the idea of a meaningful coincidence or a coinciding of events 
unlikely to appear together. And this coinciding can result in a range of feelings and results from experiencing delight and surprise, all the way to the synchronicity having life-changing impact on a person. Many see synchronicity as a confirming sign that they are proceeding in the right direction in their thinking or actions. More students of synchronicity feel that events can be connected by meaning just as they might be connected by cause and effect. So what does synchronicity mean? That things just happen. You're not attempting to make them, ha make them happen. What you need suddenly appears. What you're thinking of suddenly manifests. You're thinking of a friend, the friend calls you. Okay. You're thinking of eating something and that thing is served for the dinner that day or the lunch that day. Or you're looking for some information and suddenly you see a magazine with that particular thing over there, right? These are all synchronistic events which take place and things just appear and they seem to just happen effortlessly and flawlessly. Yes, Kavita Didi? Yeah, Nikki, that's been happening with me for the last two days. Correct. It's really, I was thinking of discussing that with you. Wonderful. So see, this is what is happening, right? So yeah. what does it say here? When you have clarity in your field, when you are energetically at the at a in a pure state, then automatically you start attracting what you need to happen in your life, and it automatically starts to happen, and synchro synchronicity starts to happen, right? And we are there because we are allowing it to happen. Otherwise, it is not going to happen. So we need to be open to that field. Otherwise, we it, it's not going to work. Okay. So our openness is what attracts uh, attracts the universal consciousness to produce whatever needs to happen in our life for our highest good. That is what synchronicity is all about. Synchronistic events suggest an underlying pattern that is grander than the visible reality wherein the synchronicity appears. Carl Gustav Jung, who developed the theory of a universal mind or collective unconscious, coined the term synchronicity to describe temporarily coincident occurrences of a-causal, non-cause effect events. Following discussions with Albert Einstein, Jung believed that there were parallels between synchronicity and aspects of relativity theory and quantum mechanics. From the religious perspective, synchronicity shares similar characteristics to the concept of grace. Synchronicities can shift a person's preoccupation with their own self towards an awareness, awareness that they are a part of a magnificent and mysterious whole. So what is quantum mechanics all about? What is quantum theory all about? Quantum theory is that everything is working in synchronicity at the end of the day. Everything is affecting everything else, right? And what is grace? When you connect with the universal consciousness, when you connect with a higher state of consciousness, grace flows into your life, okay? So they are extremely similar. And that is where science and spirituality have started to merge and meet. When you go, get into the quantum theory, there is no distinction. The distinction cannot be found. In his book, Synchronicity, 1952, Jung relates a synchronistic event with a patient who was overly wedded to rational thinking and out of touch with the more magical part of life. He was sitting opposite her one day, listening to her. She had a dream the night before in which someone had given her a golden scarab. While she was still telling him this dream, he heard something gently tapping on the window. He turned around and saw an insect against the window pane. He opened the window and caught the insect in the air as it flew in. It was a beetle whose gold-green color resembled that of a golden scarab. He handed the beetle to her with the words, here is your scarab. This experience punctured her rationalism and broke the ice 
of a intellectual resistance. So we all know that we've got two sides of the brain, the left and the right. The left side is the logical side. The right side is the emotional side. Now, what happens is that the left side is linear in thinking. It doesn't take a guess all. It wants cause and effect all the time, right? But the right side takes the guess all. It takes a snapshot. It is intuitive. It seeks to find connection with the whole. Now, if you are totally rational all the time, you are, you are only operating out of memory, right? Whatever you know, that is what you can logically deal with. If you don't know something, you can't deal with it. Whereas the right side of the brain can deal with the unknown also. Why? Because it's connecting with the whole. So in this case, this lady was totally rational. So she, in her point of view, a dream can never manifest. What is seen in a dream can never manifest. But the right side of the brain can understand that it is a way of communication of the subconscious with the conscious. So what she saw in her dream, it actually manifested. From catching the bug of synchronicity, synchronicities are those moments of meaningful coincidence when the boundary dissolves between the inner and the outer. At the synchronistic moment, our internal, subjective state appears as if materialized in the outside world. Touching the heart of our being, synchronicities are moments in time in which there is a fissure in the fabric of what we have taken for reality and there is a bleed through from a higher dimension outside of time. Synchronicities are expressions of the dreamlike nature of reality as they are moments when the timeless dreamlike nature of the universe shines forth its radiance and openly reveals itself to us. So there is a higher planning which is resulting in everything that is happening over here, right? And the point here becomes that that higher planning actually seeps through when we go into that open state of mind, that open state of consciousness, that open heartedness, right? That is when it starts to seep through. It, it just silvers through. And then what happens is that the magic starts to happen. But we need to allow it to happen. We cannot just, you know, it's, it's an engagement. It's a, it's, it's a clicking. It's a setting of the tune. It's the harmonizing. When we go into that state, that balancing, that centering starts to take place and then things start to manifest. Most of us have had occasional synchronicities. It is likely that many were just a delightful surprise. Others, a sign of confirmation and perhaps some that were life-changing. For me, the meeting and courtship of Alina, who became my wife, was filled with many synchronicities. When energy is raised high and hearts are open in the Inner Vegas Adventure workshops and the Sync Creation workshops, as well as in many of the Monroe Institute programs, we see a dramatic increase in the number and quality of synchronicities that people experience. People report that when they think of someone they need to talk with, the person appears in moment, moments. They relate that the person they sit next to randomly at dinner or who joins them in the elevator is just the right person at the right time to give them insight, wisdom or support. They have their elevator get stuck on floor nine and then go to the casino, bet the number nine and win big. Just one second, please. Okay. So what is he saying again over here? That when you are in that open-minded state, right? This is what we find that when we are doing uh, life enriching stuff, and over here, he mentions the Monroe Institute programs, the Inner Vegas Adventure, all these sync creation programs. These are all programs which are using Hemi-Sync. They are taking you into an altered state of consciousness. 
they are opening your heart they are increasing the connectivity between the heart and the brain you go into that state of consciousness which allows for that magic to seep into your life you get you become open to the universal consciousness and that is when again the magic starts to happen over the years of my doing this work synchronicities have expanded in quantity and quality so they now occur on a regular basis i have come to feel that they are a constant reminder of being supported by our magical universe and such synchronicities can in fact be shaped by our intent both to experience more of them and as to their content when i'm starting a project i'm now open to synchronicity i trust and expect that many will happen that will help me in ways that i do not even know i need help they make my progress towards my goal a more delightful meaningful and easy path also many of the synchronicities will take the form of clear signs that i can use to guide my path for example i often see a feather even at night falling from the sky when i am getting a strong yes from the universe so most of the time you know when we start a project we'll have we'll have uh, you know doubts as to whether it will happen it won't happen and all that stuff right the point here is that if something what i have seen if something is coming into your life and we start saying yes then things start to move and when we have that trust we have that connection we have that inner we listen to that inner voice but then listening to that inner voice and listening to your conscious uh, you know voice that regular chatter that we have it's a very thin line and that is what we need to discern when we start listening to that inner voice then again the magic starts to happen we can really get lot of intuition lot of insight as to what is the timing of when should things should be done who is the person who we can approach to help us to get the job done where it should be done all these factors start to fall into place and magical things start to happen your case example is what is happening with awareness right now we never thought that it will become something like this but it's just happening the one thing is leading to the other thing you're not even wanting i mean there is no planning involved but everything is just falling into place automatically right this happens in projects also that at the right time the right thing will happen provided you are open to that consciousness that conscious awareness and you are operating from that higher state of uh, uh, you know a, a higher vibratory frequency let's put it that put that way for lack of a better word the hand up our discussion of synchronicity leads us to the term serendipity which can mean both good fortune as in a happy coincidence and also an aptitude for making desirable discoveries by accident the term was first coined in the 1700s from the persian fairy tale the three princes of serendip whose heroes were always making fortuitous discoveries by accident it is often now used to describe scientific discoveries such as for penicillin where the investigator was not looking for what he discovered serendipity also implies that the person experiencing them is wise enough to link together or take advantage of things that may appear random to another person i find this to be true our ego mind tends to lock us into a habitual way of thinking which often results in us going through the world with perceptual and intellectual blinders on when we raise our energy and open our hearts thereby softening the ego then we are much more likely to call in synchronicities but also be able to see and utilize serendipity so this is very important here serendipity also implies that the person experiencing them is wise enough to link together or take advantage of things that may appear random to another person so you must be open to observing 
what is happening around us now this is something that we we uh, when we were reading agora the left hand of god he said it very clearly that nature talks everything around us is talking we need to have eyes ears to hear and see feel what nature is telling us and then when we start observing we start actually paying attention that is when the magic starts to happen kavita didi your hand was up i think you have something to say no no niket when we were doing the gateway Yeah. Remember, there was this one question which we go into. Um, I forget what was it like. You travel ahead, and I don't remember what exactly which exercise it was. Mm. So you had put on this question that where do you see awareness? Mm. And I really remember clearly remember that you were talking, and there were like thousands of people listening to you. अच्छा. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things happen. Things happen. Yeah. Yeah. part of the deli delight of this open hearted high energy way of living is that our timing tends to become more impeccable which allows the synchronicities and serendipities to occur that will lead us to our dreams in ways better and more quickly than we can imagine and the journey towards our goal is often enriched by experiences and people along the way that could not have been anticipated as we started on our path okay so over here he clearly says timing okay high energy way of living is is that our timing tends to become more impeccable so when are you doing something see you may be doing the right thing but if you do it at the wrong time it will not give you the result that you are really looking for okay so when you are going into this high state of awareness your timing becomes impeccable you know when to do what and you'll do it at the right time and again this i'm telling you from uh, personal experience that timing is so important but that getting that feel of when is the right time is the name of the game when we are open hearted and feeling connected to the other people and the world grounded we tend to be able to read the signs better in terms of not only how but also when to proceed we call the person at just the right time to reach them when they are available and in a very receptive mood we read just the right book at the right time in fact the opposite is also true when we seem to be struggling meeting roadblocks at every turn and our timing is off then that is a clear sign that either one of two things may be occurring one is that it is not the right path or time or two that we are not in the correct energy for what we are attempting to accomplish if you find yourself in this position it is a great time to use some of the exercises in this book to reset your energy so whenever we are facing blocks right there is a resistance so here the four s's start to come into play what are the four s's first one swata it should come by itself second sahaj it should be easy for you to do third shreshth it should be for the highest good and fourth uh, swikar that we accept it okay now if any one of these four is violated you are bound to face road blocks in whatever you are doing and if they are not all of them are not present then succeeding in what you are doing becomes a very difficult job to achieve okay the other thing he says very clearly we are not in the correct energy for what we are attempting to accomplish now we have spoken about this the levels of consciousness when we are looking at it from the david hawkins perspective if to manifest something the energy level of consciousness required is at 300 and we are operating at 100 it is never going to manifest so road blocks will keep coming into our field so becoming aware of what is my level of consciousness what is the state of awareness that i am operating in 
and what is the level required for something to manifest also becomes very, very important. It is interesting to me that in many dictionaries, the word immediately following serendipity is serene because that brings up the next important aspect to generating great luck and that is trust. All we have explored in this book points out to me that it is not a hostile world unless we make it so for ourselves, both individually and as a culture. Okay, so what does it say, say over here? That we need to be serene, we need to be centered, okay? And when are we centered? When we are operating out of trust. So we need to have trust that whatever is happening is happening for the best. It is for the greater good. And also whatever is happening is our own creation. We are creating our reality. We, we, we can blame anyone for whatever is happening. But at the end of the day, we need to take responsibility for whatever is happening around us. And when we do that, that is again when the magic will start to happen. Why? Because the control of what is happening is not in the other guy's hand. Because we are taking responsibility, we take back control of our reality into our own hands. Now, if we are perceiving everything as hostile, then it is our creation. So we have to change our perspective, the way that we are looking at things for the change to happen in the environment around us. So when we change the inner weather pattern, the outer weather pattern automatically starts to shift and change. Rather, our earth experience is designed so that it can be a beautiful experience filled with love despite and perhaps because of the challenges physical life presents. It is very difficult to trust when you have had the experience of much ongoing pain. But those who cultivate trust using whatever philosophical or other tools they can manage often begin to experience the sweetness of life to a much greater degree. So what does this mean, right? Now, we can be operating from the left side of the grid. We can be operating from the right side of the grid. If we are operating from the right side of the grid, then all the sweetness in life starts to come into our life. When we are operating from the left side of the grid, we are getting degenerated all the time. We are in a depleting state of mind. And this is very much in our hands, where we are operating from. What is the state of consciousness that we are operating from is absolutely in our hands. It is in no one else's hand. So we need to take the power back into our own hands. This generates even more trust that this is a good world and that they are a good person. It forms a very positive feedback cycle where the more you trust in goodness, the more goodness appears. And the more you trust because you keep receiving confirmation that your trust is merited. Jimmy Burgess in One Decision Can Change Everything puts it this way. Are you going to allow your current struggle or painful past to make you bitter or better? So what does it say? Whatever you are resonating with, whatever you are putting out comes back to you. Now the same person may not give it to you, but it will come back to you in some form or the other. So whatever you put out is what you are. It, again, that Wayne Dyer thing, you, if you squeeze an orange, you're going to get orange juice. You're not going to get apple juice, right? So what is it that you're radiating? This becomes so important, right? And the more you give out, the more you will get. So we need to be aware of what are we actually giving out all the time. Be consciously aware of it and then do whatever you are doing. Sometimes being willing to more deeply trust involves surrender when things have not been going well. And even if they have gone well, that circumstances will continue to nurture you. It helped me to surrender when I decided that instead of viewing surrender as giving up, that when I surrender all I am, 
really surrendering is my illusion of separateness so we you see this is a question of duality whenever we are in duality there is win lose me and the other when we start moving into wholeness where if i am harming someone i am harming myself if i am doing good for someone i am doing good for myself then we, what are you going to land up doing you are going to constantly look at uplifting everyone and everything around you you are not going to look at depleting and taking away from anyone you are always going to be looking at giving to others because the more you give the more you will get back okay it's a very simple theory it's and it, it actually starts to happen and that is what we need to all of us we need to do we need to surrender the illusion of separateness there is no separation through this book and through any other ways that show up to grace your life i hope that you move into a life where happiness gratitude abundance love and luck abound and that you experience the joy and power of this and the delight of sharing this with others sometimes life flows easily when applying the principles that have been presented at other times there are dragons that must be fought the next chapter will discuss these dragons a bit in the effort to help when things are not as smooth and easy as we would like them to be so again what do we need to move into happiness gratitude abundance love and feeling of luck or being lucky all the time this is what we are looking for but that doesn't happen all the time right there are times when we get stuck when we are down when we are under so i think the next chapter we look at what we can do when those things happen okay i think we can stop here and anyone anything 